And we're back. You guys like the commercial break? <clears throat> <clears throat> so what I want to do now, I want to share with you guys an article from one of my favorite mentors, one of my favorite people, Steve Burns. This article is tips for pro traders that are not taught in school. So first tip he says is to keep trading simple. Let's zoom in so we can read this. He says, remember what Bruce Lee said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. He says, all you need is a few simple strategies and tactics, plus the ability to manage risk, more on this later, and you can make a good living in trading. People are usually shocked at how small my toolkit is. Most of the time, I'm looking at the 8, 21, find that funny? 50 and 200 day moving averages. Aren't those the same moving averages that we look at at ASFX? Trend lines, channels, and chart patterns, stocks and sectors were showing relative strength. He has one oscillator, his level two screens, and his VTF room where he shares his ideas. This is all I need to make money. Seven, where he's going eight down. He focuses on big picture trends. There's a saying in trading, the bearish argument always sounds better, but perfectly logical bearish arguments are wrong all the time. Do you remember Brexit, President uh, Trump's election victory, the North Korean missile scare? Plenty of people sold because of these events and then watched the market skyrocket. Even the COVID pandemic quickly turned into a massive buying opportunity. That's why I'm obsessed with big picture trends. My main rule is pretty simple. When the SPX is above the 8 and 21, I want to be long multiple stocks showing strength. So he's just given some strategies there on the stocks. So again, number seven here, focus on the big picture trend. What is the actual market doing? Six, learn to lose small. He says, I like to say when we, uh, sorry, I like to say we can handle paper cuts, but we can't handle gushers. A lot of traders will actually be fairly consistent and they'll find a way to give it all back. They'll lose months worth of profit in 15 minutes. This is what it typically looks like. They're up a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit, up, 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 and then boom, a huge loss ends up wiping them out. Smooth sailing and then a huge loss, he says. So thinks about this. Sometimes, in order to understand like how to lose small, it makes more sense to be taking profits along the way. And really it comes down to being willing to let go of being right. He says, I'll think about selling a stock when it gets stretched above the seven day moving average. If it hell, if it fails to hold above a prior high, if it goes red and shows relative weakness, anything that goes against him or even here overextended is a reason to take profits and to not let it turn into a loss. He says here, number five, treat every day like a new day. Don't live by yesterday's PL. Someone said, can I have the link to the article? Yes, put it right here. Don't live by yesterday's PL. I love that. Too often we'll let yesterday's trades come into today and influence the decisions that we make. No matter what happened yesterday, you should come into today with a clean slate, brand new, you know, untouched mind, so to speak. And I think what that allows you to do is stay unemotional or as unemotional as possible then deferring to the rules, then deferring to your system, then deferring to your checklist. Number four, develop a daily routine. I think that's huge. You guys know with what I'm doing, I'm waking up every day at the same time. I'm doing my meditation. I'm doing my coffee. I'm doing everything the same before I get to the desk. And I think that's what's led to my success. So for everybody that sees me posting about going to the gym every day at 12 o'clock and they give me shit and they're like, why are you posting this? This doesn't have anything to do with trading. I know it doesn't. I'm showing you off the charts, how to be a better trader. It's to hold yourself to a disciplined routine. I think also stopping trading at a certain time every day is a part of a disciplined routine. You shouldn't be sitting at the desk for 17 hours a day. That's not why you got into trading. So the routine has to be pre-built and balanced. What are you doing before the market? What are you doing during? When do you stop? What are you doing off the desk for yourself? And then what are you doing to review? Review is a big part of the routine that a lot of people overlook. Reviewing your trades is a huge piece towards growing, towards being more consistent. Number three, know what you can handle. Some of my subscribers want to copy all my trades, but you might not be able to handle some of the, state, uh, the trades that I take. For example, I've had some, right? So he goes through a trade example here. What he's saying is know what you can handle. This is part of the reason why I've never shared how much money I make on my trades, because I think anything where we start to fog the uh, the vision, fog the clarity of what we're trying to share, which is systematic trading that can distract you. So know what you can handle means don't trade too big. Don't trade too small. Know what's proper for your account, for your level of expertise, for your experience. And that's what you should be focusing in on. Don't try to learn 40 different strategies. Focus on one. Know what you can handle. I love that. Number two, don't live 
your PL. Earlier, we talked about not trading your PL. Now, let's talk about not living your PL. If you've just had your best year ever, I have some very bad news for you. You are at risk of having your worst year ever. Let me explain. Many traders have a big year or a month and start spending. They buy a new house, a new car, they start flying first class to play poker, and guess what? They've doubled or tripled their monthly nut. After a few bad days, they're thinking, I need to make 15000 by the end of the week because I'm behind on my mortgage payment and my car payment. And then they start taking bad trades and forcing trades, and then they dig themselves deeper into a hole. Someone asked me in my Q&A on Instagram yesterday, they said, what's the biggest purchase that you've made from trading? And I don't really have one. Maybe my Tesla, but I didn't buy that. I leased it. Maybe the trips that I've taken, I try to travel with Riley once a month to go to a new place and stay somewhere new. Like we just got back yesterday from a quick trip to Texas for a Russ concert. But I really don't spend money like that on like a to go and spend my trading money like that because I just reinvested or I'm moving it into another investment idea. So reinvesting it. I think that too many people get caught up in it's called lifestyle creep. You start making a certain amount of money, you're making a hundred grand, you're like, oh shit, bro, I've never made a hundred grand before. So then from the hundred grand, you start spending like you're making 150, and then you're screwed. You're just digging yourself too deep into a hole. I'm very grateful my dad taught me to not live like that. And then the last tip here, this is again the eight tips for pro traders not taught in schools. Don't go at it alone. Too many traders view the markets as a zero-sum game. They hold up in a corner, afraid to share anything. They don't talk to people. They don't have a community. They don't have anything like that. And I think that that kills them. So I love this as the last tip. You need people not only to bounce your trading ideas off of, but to hold you accountable to growth. That is the biggest thing with what we do at ASFX. And again, that's why I'm so excited to announce the Black Shirt Club. This is something that James and I want to provide to you guys, this intimate coaching group. I'll show you right here this intimate coaching group, because I think what this will do is help me hold you more accountable to the goals and to the growth that you want for yourself. Without accountability, we do not grow. So as great as it would be for me to just give you all of my trade calls, that's not going to build you a business that can build legacy for you and your family. But if I can teach you how to trade for yourself, if I can teach you how to fish, you're, you're off and running. You don't even need me anymore. But I think every successful trader that I've ever worked with has a coach, has a mentor. And that's why we're offering the Black Shirt Club. Again, I'm going to send the link right here so you guys can apply if you'd like to be coached by James and myself in a private setting, a very intimate setting. You'll get our private cell phone numbers. You'll be able to set up unlimited calls with us. We could do a call every day if you need it. Whenever I'm free, I'm going to be there for you guys and so is James. And it works out well that we're doing it together because it makes it so if I'm asleep, he's awake. If he's asleep, I'm awake. Like It's almost like a 24-hour thing now. So we can take on clients, not even just from the United States. We can take on clients in Europe, South Africa, Africa, Asia, Australia. We can cover the whole world now because we're doing it together. So definitely check out the Black Shirt Club if you're interested in coach being coached by James and myself. Either way, those eight tips, hopefully, will just get you thinking a little bit more. Which one of those tips do I need to improve on the most? 